very good evening to all of you and this is the national news broadcast on channel i and we are ready to bring you the top stories from home and around the world i'm nathalia virvadana a very good evening indeed i am charitha minipurarachi and now let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news the main department forecasts less rains from tomorrow Islam followers around the world celebrate Ramadan festival. Vaccination program will take place in Kandy, Kurunagala and Ratnapura districts after the Western Province. Maharagam Apeksha Hospital gets 100 beds under the 10,000 beds project. On to those and other stories in detail now and starting off with local stories. The med department says it expects a reduction of rains on tomorrow. The department said that the impact of the low pressure area in the Arabian Sea is getting less. Meanwhile, the med department said that there is no any impact on the country due to the earthquake near Sumatra Island. Rains can occur in the western Sabaragamu, central and northwestern provinces and in Mathura district. The med department said that rains above 75 mm can occur in Ratnapura, Kegol, Gol, Mathura, Nuwaralia and Kalutra districts. The wind speed can increase up to 50 km per hour. Deputy Director of the Disaster Management Center Pradeep Kodipili said that the water level of rivers are increasing. Two Swiss gate of Putlam Tabbo Reservoir were opened this morning. Putlam Regional Irrigation Engineer Vidura Krishanta said if rains continue, ten Swiss glades have to be opened. Irrigation Engineer in charge of Dadru Oil Reservoir Sampath Samarajiva said that four Swiss gates of the reservoir were opened three feet each this morning. Another two Swiss gates have been opened due to increase of water level by noon. Six Swiss gates of Dadru Oil have been opened by four feet each at present. About 60 families at Varakapola, Darunegala, Dehiovita and Ranvela Divisional Secretariat areas are facing dangers. Five houses at Varakapola, Ghaznava area has been damaged due to landslides. One person has died after being buried in an earth mound. Another two are under treatment at Kegel Hospital. Steps have been taken to provide dry rations to those who have been affected. Some groups have been sent for safe locations. MP Udekanta Gunatilaka has taken steps to provide facilities needed by the people. Roads in Pugada area and low-lying areas have submerged due to the overflowing of Kalani River. Hanwella, Nittambu Main Road has gone underwater. Nuwaralia Disaster Management Unit said that Northern Bridge of Vimalasurendra Reservoir is overflowing and one Swiss gate of Lakshapan Reservoir has been opened. Two Swiss gates of Kukulegam Reservoir have been opened. Several low-lying areas have submerged at Bulat Singhala, Paragoda and due to overflowing of Kaluganga. Three places on Bulat Singhala, Molkava Road have gone underwater. Several houses at Pasyala, Ranavirugam areas were submerged due to the overflowing of El Oya. Transport on Kalambo Ratnapura Main Road has been hampered due to sinking of a stretch of Avisavela Upper Road due to a landslide. Water level of Udavalava Reservoir has increased with rains in Samanala Vava, Kaltota, Haldumulla and Balangota areas. Three Swiss gates of reservoir were opened last night. The water level of Gingaga has increased due to heavy rains. The road at Pattivala area has been damaged. District Secretary Mahinda Esvira Surya said that 324 families in the Kegol district have been displaced due to heavy rains and winds. He said that they have been provided with necessary food items after locating them to Tholangamu Central College. The Navy relief team rescued six persons affected due to overflowing of Ginganga. It is reported that three individuals and a woman who were stuck on a tree after being washed away by strong currents were among them. Another two women trapped inside a house due to floods in the same area were also rescued. Ten Navy teams have been deployed at Kalutara Gal Mathura district to provide relief in the event of floods due to increase of water level of Kalu, Ging and Nilwala reservoirs. Divisional Secretary Samantha Vikramaratna said that 42 families at Gramaradhahari divisions of Pandala Divisional Secretariat are, have been displaced. People and who have been displaced at Nalavan and Maharagama Gramaradhahari divisions have been for the safe locations. MP Saman Priya Herat said that the steps have been taken to meet the needs of the affected people. Followers of Islam around the world are celebrating Ramazan festival today. 
The Ramzan festival, which comes after fasting for one month, is a special religious day for the Muslim community. The Muslim religious leaders requested their followers to celebrate the religious festival in a simple manner as a measure to prevent the spread of coronavirus and also it is necessary to follow health guidelines. According to the recommendations, celebrating the religious festival was seen to be limited to homes today. And meanwhile, President Gotabe Rajapaksha says that it is a valuable example to show the entire Islamic world by us through building of peace, brotherhood and reconciliation. Issuing a Ramazan message, the President has said that he believed the collective commitment and determination of true Islam followers who follow the Holy Quran would be further directed in that regard. After ending the fasting period, Sri Lankan Muslim community celebrate Eid ul fitr with the hope that their wishes would be accepted by Allah. The President has expressed his greetings for the festival. Although it is a tradition to seek the blessings of Allah for a prosperous life by spending Ramazan period together, irrespective of differences, the social meaning should also be appreciated. Islam followers believed that Ramazan period is an important opportunity for clean lives and to control oneself. The statement issued by the President has mentioned our Islam followers wish to free the world from community from the COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha in his message has said that Islamic community who has been disciplined through religion and correct teachings have acted accordingly with the communities and religious in Sri Lankan community throughout the history. The Prime Minister's message said that the government has understood the need of Islamic community to move forward without damaging the trust. The Prime Minister's belief is that although the Eid al-Fritr cannot be celebrated this year due to the corona pandemic, the religious rituals could be conducted according to health guidelines. The Prime Minister in his message has emphasized that he commend all Islam followers who conduct religious rituals from homes without gathering in large numbers at mosques according to health protective measures. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says that we would pay our all religious teachers for the fees and happiness and health. He has said that he expressed his gratitude for Islam followers who took part in religious activities, wishing the end of this disaster period. The opposition leader's message said that he believed that the mind should be cleansed before anything else for the betterment and protection of humans. Justice Minister Ali Sabri says that Islam followers had to celebrate Ramazan festival this year without traditional travels and meetings. Issuing a Ramazan message, the minister pointed out it is a duty by the Sri Lankans and for the benefit of loved ones, the message has asked to pray for health workers and security forces who have worked to protect us and for the welfare of the global community. Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira said that COVID patients and deaths were reported yesterday as well. COVID Shield, Sinopharm and Sputnik vaccines were given yesterday. Meanwhile, travel restrictions have been imposed along with the vaccination. Yesterday we have identified 2,249 cases within the country and also another 20 among the returnees from overseas and under quarantine. Uh, along with that, 2,269 cases were identified yesterday. With this, the total number of cases identified with in Sri Lanka has totaled to 135,796. Out of that, 26,126 cases are under treatment at intermediate treatment centers and hospitals. Yesterday, 24 deaths were reported. Along with that, the total number of deaths reported in our country has risen to 892. As a one of the key weapons to fight against COVID-19 that we are using in the immunization, at the moment, there are three kinds of immun that vaccine are being used in the country. Those are Covishield, Sinopharm vaccine and the Sputnik vaccine. Out of that, we have administered Covishield vaccine to 925,242 people as the first dose and out of them, 241,522 people were given the second dose. The Sinopharm uh, vaccine that yesterday we have administered to 64,260 people in the western province. Along with that, the total number of vaccine that uh, immunized with uh, Sinopharm vaccine vaccine first dose has uh, gone up to 214,880 in our country and also that we are giving the Sputnik vaccine that we received only 15,000 at the first consignment out of that uh, uh, by now we have given 14,673 doses so that we know that this weekend uh, that there are uh, travel restrictions that we can see that it is implementary well and people are not in the road that they are confined into their homes and actually this is a very good move and this is this will be very helpful for us to control the disease. 
Meanwhile, travel restrictions have been imposed from 11 p.m. yesterday to 4 a.m. on Monday. Police said it is compulsory for other groups to stay at home except for the people who are engaged in essential services during that period. All shops should be kept closed during the travel restriction is in force. Permission has been given to open pharmacies and people can go to the nearest pharmacy to purchase medicine. Permission has been given to distribute dry rations and cooked meals through Satasar supermarkets and restaurants. Owners of such institutions should get permission from the OIC of the police station in the relevant area. Palyagoda Fish Market, Manning Market and Economic Centres are opened only for wholesale trade. The goods purchased from such places can be taken and sell from the relevant trader's place through orders. Permission has been given to continue with road development activities. People can attend to vaccination programs. Manufacturing organizations of the Board of Investment and Export Development Board and factories can function. Employees of those places should be provided transport facilities through a transport service. Police said public transport services and hiring vehicle services will not function during this time. If a person needs to visit a hospital or the airport, such a person can use his private vehicle or a hired vehicle. Essential services are implemented without any obstructions. The identity card method is not implemented during these three days and it will be effective from Monday. Dambulla Economic Centre was open today and traders said that farmers had brought about 400,000 kilograms of vegetables from various areas of the country. Vegetable stocks brought to Tambuttegama Economic Centre has been purchased by the government. It has purchased 70,000 kilograms of vegetables. Although shops were closed due to travel restrictions, essential services were conducted without any obstacles. 282 persons who violated quarantine regulations during the last 24 hours have been arrested. Police said 9,029 individuals were taken into custody for violating quarantine regulations since 30th October last year. 20,000 police officers have been deployed for duty at roadblocks and mobile patrols. Certain groups have lost their livelihood with the implementation of their restrictions. The government has decided to provide a 5,000 rupee concessionary sack for the quarantine families and for people in isolated areas through Satosa. Minister Bandula Gunavardana has given necessary instructions to Satosa. Distribution of the concessionary sex will be done through district secretaries and division secretariats, Gram Niladari officers and Samurdi officials. The trade ministry said that Sotasa and cooperative outlets will be kept open only to issue concessionary sex to district and division secretariats. Several Gram Niladari divisions of three districts have been isolated. Army Commander General Shavendra Silva said the isolation will be effective until 4 a.m. on Monday. Accordingly, four areas of 150C Gram Niladari Division under Kiran Kulam Police Area and two areas of 150B Gram Niladari Division in the Batiklo District have been isolated. Twelve Gram Niladari Divisions of Kenya Police Area of the Trincomalee District have been isolated. Twenty-four Gram Niladari Divisions of the Giriula Police Area in the Kurunagala District have been isolated. Minister Pavitra Vanyaraji says that COVID-19 vaccination program will be implemented in Kandy, Kurunagala and Ratnapura district after the Western Province. It will be implemented at selected regional medical divisions of those districts. 1,154,795 have been given the first dose of COVID vaccine so far. 74,225 Sinopharm vaccine first dose and Covishield vaccine second dose have been given yesterday. The first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine has been given to 64,260 yesterday. So far, 214,880 have been given the Sinopharm vaccine. 241,522 have been given the second dose of the Covishield vaccine. Giving the COVID vaccine to journalists commenced today. The vaccination program for journalists took place today at Sri Jayavardhanapura Hospital. It has been organized under the patronage of Health Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi on a request from Media Minister Kehalia Rambukpelle. There are more than 6,000 who are in possession of media identity cards issued by the Government Information Department. The Ministry of Mass Media has informed media organizations to send journalists for vaccination according to their priority.
A vaccination program took place today at Talangamadipur premises led by the army. State Minister Dilu Mamonugama was present to observe the program. Meanwhile, a total of 889 COVID-19 patients were detected today. 1,306 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. Accordingly, the total of recoveries in the country has increased up to 111,108. A total of 25,685 COVID-19 patients are still receiving treatments in hospitals. The College of Gynecology says that pregnant women who have corona symptoms should get hospitalized as soon as possible, even during the period of travel restrictions. The Corona Control Committee meeting of Polon Narva district was held today, yesterday, rather under the patronage of North Central Province Governor Mahipala Hera. It was held at the Polon Narva district secretary. A new ward complex has been built at Mulderia Base Hospital with the assistance of the Air Force. It will be equipped with 200 beds. Air Force Commander Sudarshan Apathiruna made an observation today at the place. To 100 beds were provided to Maharagama Piksha Hospital today under the patronage of Minister Nama Rajapaksha. The beds were given under the project to donate 10,000 beds to corona patients. The beds have been donated on a request made by the management on behalf of the corona patients at the Apeksha Hospital. Director of the hospital, Dr. Vijit Gunasekara, and Chairman of the National Youth Services Council, Damta Vikram Singha, were present on the occasion. Minister Nama Rajapaksha also inspected the shortcomings at the Apeksha Hospital. Mr. Nama Rajapaksha said that everyone should work together to overcome the disaster. The government alone cannot perform the task. The government will provide all facilities as youth and there is a responsibility to support to build the future. उपदेश <laughs> The women's hostel of the Rajagiri Institute of Indigenous Medicine has been converted into a COVID treatment center. It has capacity to treat 324 patients at once. The army prepared the beds on the instructions of Army Commander General Shavendra Silva. Minister Bandula Gunivardhana, Nama Rajapaksha and MP Madhura Vithana gave a present on the occasion. 1,000 beds are being prepared at Human Resource Development Center and Mechanical Workshop of the Irrigation Department at Ratmalana. Minister Chamal Rajapaksha made an observational tour of the place yesterday along with State Minister Anuradha Chakratna. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. Do it just tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.